I believe the Lord has something to speak to us in a very unique way. I mean, God can talk to you in a unique way. Amen. And uh, I want you to take your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Old Testament, to the book of Daniel. It's easy to find. It's right in between Ezekiel and Hosea. And um, we're going to be speaking from the book of Daniel. The Lord's been speaking to my heart for several weeks now that he wanted me to mention some of the truths that are found where Daniel was put into the den of lions. And though many times that story is found in Sunday school, many times that story is shared in children's church or in youth classes, I believe it is an adult story as well as a children's story. It was an adult that got thrown in the lion's den. His name was Daniel. And in our Bible, we find some great truths that are embedded in this chapter 6 of the book of Daniel. We'll be, we're going to begin reading with verse 20, and we're going to share three verses of Scripture with you. And uh, let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Daniel 6, verse 20. And when Darius came to the den, Daniel's already been thrown in the den of lions. Darius cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. I want to draw your attention to the phrase in the last part of verse 20. Is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee? I want to use for a subject this morning, is my God able to deliver me? You may be seated. Is my God able to deliver me? Now, someone would say, well, preacher, it's not God I'm worried about. It's me I'm worried about, my abilities. Well, you know, one thing we, we need to understand about what Jesus did on the cross is he fixed it so that you could go to heaven without any abilities. You can, you can be totally disabled. In fact, we were before we gave our hearts to Jesus Christ. There's nothing that you have to do other than just crumble at the feet of the majestic Son of God. That's all you have to do. It's easy to crumble. Hello. How many ever watched someone crumble? I have. And uh, I've seen male, you know, men crumble and women crumble. I've seen children crumble. But you can rejoice in the fact that when you crumble at the feet of Jesus Christ, he knows how to put all the pieces back together. I mean, he can make a brand new one. He don't have to have anything. I mean, you can take the Jesus nothing. He can make something out of it. So if you feel like nothing, I got good news for you. God hung the worlds on nothing by the word of his power. Now this story about Daniel being thrown into the den of lions is an amazing story. King Darius was the king of the Medes and Persian. Cyrus is part of the Persian. And when they went in and took the kingdom away from Belshazzar, Babylon, they came in and conquered that in the night, you know, the handwriting on the wall, and then that night Belshazzar was just conquered. But Darius become a leader, the king of that great empire, the Medes and the Persians. And Darius 
sought him out 120 princes in his kingdom, in his domain. And those 120 princes were to be responsible for the accounting and responsible for the finances and the well-being of the empire, the king's empire. And so he sought out three men that would be presidents over the 120. Under the presidents, they would be uh, the 120, then they'd be governors, then they would be um, uh, lawgivers, there would be uh, different types of positions, but three presidents would be picked. Among those three presidents was a man by the name of Daniel. And they picked Daniel because there was an excellent spirit in him. The Bible says that, that um, King Darius chose this man because of the excellent spirit that was in him. And I want to say this, that's in verse three. I want to say this right now. Every, every Christian, and, it, and of course you've been born again if you're a Christian, every born again Christian, there ain't no other kind, has an excellent spirit in them. Are you listening to me? If you've been born again, you have an excellent spirit in you. And, and uh, we'll get into more about that in just a little bit, but I wanna say this right now. Every born again child of God in this room, you have two options. Number one, you can choose to let the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost have his way in your life. Or you can choose to have your way. In every child of God, there's one of two things. There's either the Holy Spirit in someone that is, that Holy Spirit is grieved and quenched. Or the other option, you are walking and living in the power and the spirit of the living God. But you can choose that today. And I'm glad that I'm walking and living in the power of the living God by the Spirit of God. So what about your flesh? What about my flesh? About the only thing I do for it is shove food in it, scrub it up, put some cologne on so I don't smell too bad, and mind my own business. Come on. I don't even listen to, I, I, I mean, I don't even talk to myself. Let alone talk about people, I, just, I don't even talk to myself. But Daniel was a man of such integrity, Lonnie, that the King Darius knew that he had to have him as one of his presidents. And of course, the other two presidents were very jealous of Daniel because Daniel took care, he was the top notch, he was the number one of the three that Darius gave him all the authority of the kingdom. And because of that, there was two little presidents under him that was very jealous. 120 governors and, and leaders that were very jealous. And they were trying to find something about Daniel that was wrong, something that he was dishonest about. And they sought everywhere to find something that he had done wrong and that he was doing wrong and they couldn't find anything. They said the only thing we find about Daniel is he is bug-eyed over this God of Judah. The only thing we can find about Daniel is he serves what he calls the living God of Israel. And he is really fanatical about that. So we, if we can find out the law of his God and get the law of the Medes and Persians to violate the law of his God, we've got him because Daniel will never betray his God. And so they went to King Darius and they said to King Darius, oh king, live forever. These two presidents, and these 120, the two presidents went and they went to the king and they said, king, the presidents have got together and the 120 and the, and the governors of the kingdom and the princes of the kingdom have got together and we've decided to do this, do this de decree thing. Liar, 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 liar. Liar, liar, lake of fire. 
They said, we presidents have got together. No, they didn't all get together. Daniel didn't know a thing about it. Come on. And so they said, King, we want you to establish a decree that no one can ask a petition, ask of anything of man or God, except it be asked of you, O King Darius. The king thought that was a pretty good idea. And probably the king looked across his desk and said, uh, all the presidents, huh? Yeah, all the presidents, O king. Liar, liar. You mean now everybody wants you to do that? Oh yeah, they, we all want to. See, he was being trapped. And so the king signed the decree. It was the law of Medes and Persia. It could not be retracted. It couldn't, you couldn't go back and veto it. You couldn't go back and remove it. Once it was signed and the signet, the seal was put upon the decree, it could not be changed. It was there for 30 days. It was there. It could not be broken for 30 days. It was in concrete. For 30 days, it was sealed. It could not be avoided for 30 days. That's the way it was going to be. For 30 days, that's exactly the way it was going to be and guess what happened Daniel didn't know about it but when he found out about it it didn't change a thing I said it didn't change a thing are you listening to me notice Daniel has his windows open I want to say unto everybody in this room keep your windows open I said keep your windows open to God if you don't keep your windows open, it's gonna get stuffy in your life. If you don't keep your windows open, it's gonna get dreary in your life. And in verse 10, it says in this chapter six of Daniel, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, his windows open, and in his chamber toward Jerusalem, his windows open toward, toward Jerusalem, he nailed he knelt down upon his knees three times a day and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. You know what that means, as he did aforetime? Nothing changes. Daniel prayed three times a day, nothing changes. Daniel serves his God, nothing changes. Nothing changes. The, the law might have been decreed, but it wasn't going to move Daniel. Nothing changes. Daniel hears that the, the, the decree had been signed, knew the penalty was to be cast into the den of hungry lions, but yet Daniel says, no, 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 no. Doesn't make no difference what King Darius says. Makes no difference what the government says. Makes no difference what people say. My God is gonna hear my voice. My God is gonna hear my prayer. My God, I'm gonna bow before him. My God, I'm gonna ask petition of him. My God, I'm gonna call on his name. Darius may say that only, only he is the one that will receive petition, but Daniel cleared him off a spot in his uh, chamber, knelt down on his knees and said, it ain't gonna be so today. I'm gonna ask a petition of the living God. Darius, I like. Darius is a, a, pr a pretty good king as far as he's been good to me. Darius, Darius may made the decree, but he doesn't understand. There's nothing gonna come between me and my God. There's nothing gonna come between between me and the living God of Israel. And so Daniel cleared him off a spot. And I don't know how many days he prayed. The Bible says he prayed every day, morning, noon, and night, every day. Daniel prayed three times a day, cleared off a spot, bowed his knee, uh, and toward the windows, open toward Jerusalem, called out to God, made petitions unto God, thank God, love God, serve God, praise God. And I don't know how many days went on, but sooner or later, that bunch that the, that tree the rice into making that decree caught him praying, caught him talking to God and they went to the king and they said king, king, king we found somebody that's breaking the law, the Medes and Persian, the law that you had that no one could ask a petition, that no one could ask anything of a man or a God but you O oh king and they, he's broke the law, he's broke the law and the law says that he must be cast into the den of lions and he's to die the crushing, uh, grinding uh, of the teeth of the lions. He is to suffer the death of the grinding, eating. You know what? There's a lot of ways that I don't want to die, and that's one of them. Hello. Hello. I was talking to a guy just a few days ago, and he said, I'm being nagged. He said, I'm being nagged to death. 
I said, well, you've been nagged by. He said, my wife's nagging me to death. I said, what's that like? My wife don't do that to me. He said, really? I said, my wife don't nag me to death. What's that like? He said, it's kind of like being picked to death by a duck. <laughs> That's another way I don't want to die. <laughs> Hello? Come on now. And Daniel prayed and he called out to God and, and, and God heard his prayer and, and Darius tries all he can to stop this problem. He didn't want Daniel to go to the den of lions, but he made the law, he made the command. He said that's the way it would be. He tried, the Bible says he tried and he tried and he tried and he tried to get around it. He tried to rescue Daniel, but he just couldn't do it. He tried to, to get around uh, 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 and get around that, that command. And the Bible says that uh, in verse 14, it says, and the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Verse 16, and the king commanded, see, he couldn't deliver him. The king commanded when he found no way to set him free. And they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Now I want you to know there's a pagan old king, a king that doesn't know anything about God. There's a pagan old king that doesn't know God, doesn't fear God, and is probably probably worshiping other gods and himself. Yet he knew that Daniel had a hold of a God that could perform miracles. He knew that Daniel had a God that parted the Red Sea, that made the leper to walk, the the the, the leper to be cleansed, the blind to see, the the lame the wall, Daniel, that old King Darius knew that Daniel had a hold of something besides religion. Daniel had a hold of something besides some kind of religious activity. He knew that Daniel, something put that excellent spirit in him. Something put that uh, uh, profound, uh, uh, glorious spirit in him. And it wasn't something that Daniel received of himself. Something God put in there. And I want you to know, God put something in you if you're a Christian and it's an excellent spirit of God. And so King Darius, he says, the God you serve will deliver you. How's that for a testimony from a guy that don't even know God? But he knew Daniel. He knew Daniel. And you're gonna rub shoulders with people all this week that don't know God but they know you. You're gonna to talk to people all this week and they don't know God, many of them, but they know you. And if they knowing you makes them swell up with fear toward God, if them knowing you makes them have reverence to God, if them knowing you makes a difference in their heart toward God, then you're living the spirit life. You're living the life that Christ wants you to live. But if your life doesn't cause those you come in, come in contact with to fear God, love God, see God through you, then you're not where you need to be as of yet. Come on. Everybody say as of yet. Come on. And when the king couldn't find a way to get him out, the Bible says that the king set his heart to set Daniel free. The king set his heart to set Daniel free. Now, there's many types and shadows in the Bible. And one of those types and shadows is Darius is a picture of a king that made a decree that if you break it, you're gonna die in the den of lions. It reminds us of someone who made a decree that cannot be changed. His name is Jehovah, the great I am. And the great, I, the great I am, Jehovah said, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. The wages of sin is death. If you sin, you're going to die. You eat of the tree, you're going to die. And the day you eat of it, you're going to die. And your soul that sinneth shall surely die. Let me tell you, friends, when God said that, it still is true today. It hasn't been changed. It can't be altered. The soul that sinneth shall die. And God spent days and decades, months and years and decades and, and centuries and thousands of years to come up 
with what he knew that would satisfy. And he tried and tried to get us free. He tried to try to keep us from dying. But God finally said, I can't change it. I can't change the law. So I'm going to come down there in the person of my son, Jesus Christ, and I'm going to fulfill the law. I can't change it. They're going to die, but I'm going to go die for them. I'm going to die for them. And when their eyes couldn't change it, he put him in the den of lions. The Bible says he spent all night trembling all night, hurting all night, discouraged all night. The Bible says sleep went from him. He wouldn't listen to music. Sleep had just abandoned him. Now remember the last words he said to Daniel is the God in whom you serve continually, he is able to deliver you from the den of lions. And so they put him in the den and Daniel fell to the bottom of the den of lions. I've heard preachers say he just took old Brutus, fluffed him up like a pillow and laid his head on him and went to sleep. Daniel did. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a second. I believe Daniel fell down in that lion's den and I believe he got on his knees and prayed just like he did in his house. How, what would you do if you fell down in the den of lions? You wouldn't be grabbing their mane and pulling their whiskers and, and slapping them in the face. Hey, Brutus, I'm not afraid of you. Whack, whack, whack. You wouldn't do that. Hello? It takes someone mighty goofy and void of understanding to slap a lion in the face. Amen? And God sent an angel. I want you to know God sent his son, Jesus Christ. Let me show you an awesome scripture. We read it to you in the beginning. Daniel chapter 6, verse 20. Daniel spent the night in the lion's den with the lions. And Darius comes the next morning. He rushes there as quick as possible to see if Daniel's alive. Darius did. And he cried with a lamentable voice. That l lamentable voice means that it was pitiful. It was crying. It was whining. It was, it was a very broken voice. And, and he said unto Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God in whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? What do you think Daniel did when he said that? I think Daniel made a little pause, never said a word. <laughs> You say, I don't believe that. Well, if I'd have been there, I wouldn't have said a word. I'd let the king sweat it a little while. And I believe old Daniel just laid back, got real quiet. I bet that was the longest two or three minutes that that king ever, it was longer than the whole night that he couldn't sleep. And finally, Daniel clears his throat. Oh, king, live forever. My God has sent an angel, and that angel has come and shut the mouths lions, the mouth, the mouths of the lions, and my God has shut them, and there is no more hurt to me. And here's what he said: For as much before him innocency was found in me. Daniel says, I had no faults. Daniel said, I was clean. Daniel said, I was pure. Innocency was it found in me. God saw innocent. God saw me spotless and clean. And not only that, King, you saw me spotless and clean. And in that, God saw innocence in me. So God sent an angel, and 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 the and the Bible says, I. The Bible says, O oh, King, have I done no hurt to you? But my God. I want you, I'll ask that question again. Is your God able to deliver you? Is my God able to deliver me? Now, wait a minute. You ain't going to find no innocency in me. I ain't going to find no innocency in Jerry. Jerry says, pick on somebody else. I'm not going to find no innocency in anyone in this room. I'm guilty of sin. I'm not innocent. I said, I'm not innocent. 
Daniel was innocent. Daniel was clean. Daniel was living for God. But I wasn't. I'm not innocent. So it ain't a matter, is God able to save me? Of course he is. The question is, will he? Because I'm, I'm not innocent. And Daniel says, Daniel says, O king, live forever, for my God has sent an angel. I'm not innocent, but my God so loved me that he sent his only begotten son. And my God is so incredible that his only begotten son took my death, took my hell, took my sin, took my shame. And in my, in my guilty state, God has forgiven me of my sin and given me eternal life. Woo, praise the Lord. I mean that, don't, don't paddicate, give the Lord a big hand on that. My God had sent his son Jesus Christ to heal me. Why? Innocency, innocency was not found in me. I have been hurt. I've been hurt. But my God sent his son to heal me, to forgive me, to deliver me. How many in this room would you be honest and say you've been hurt? We have been hurt. Sin has took his nasty, ugly toll upon us. But I want to say glory to God. My God is able to deliver me. Amen. You know the story. Darius says, come out of there. And Daniel come out of the den of lions and the king became angry and he ordered all the those two presidents and those leaders to line up and, and, he, and he put them all in the den of lions along with their wives and their children and those lions were so hungry. I heard a preacher preaching one time, he said the lions weren't hungry. God took their hunger pains away. They were so hungry, the Bible says they ate them up, snapped and chewed their bones in two before they ever hit the bottom of the den when they were thrown in. That's how hungry they were. Amen? I teach people about the lion. The lion gets in there and the angel's there and the lion says, I, 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 can I eat him? And the angel says, you can't eat him. And the lion says, well, can I lick him? Angel says, you can't lick him. And the lion says, well, let me at least smell him. No, you can't even smell him. Amen. Come on. Now, I don't think they said, can I lick him or can I smell him or can I eat him? I think they went, mm -hmm. They couldn't talk. Amen? And the devil comes my way and he goes, mm -hmm. I said, I can't understand you. You don't speak my language. Come on now. My God has sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. Delivered me. And I want you to understand that when, when, when the king threw those other false accusers in the, in the den of lion and they were killed, he said, I want to make a decree. And King Darius made a decree. Here's what he said, that men tremble and fear the living God. He said, that living God, he delivers, he rescueth, he, he worketh signs and wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Aren't you glad about that? Aren't you glad about that? Hello. Is your God able to deliver you? Is my God able to deliver me? I don't know what's in store tomorrow, but I know this, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, hung on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood for my sin, took the agony of death, hell, in the grave, rose again from the grave, and it makes no difference what happens tomorrow. It makes no difference what happens next week or next year or 10 trillion years from now. It makes no difference because my destiny is forever founded and grounded and embedded in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Makes no difference about my past, my present, or my future. Jesus stands in the middle of my heart and nothing can touch me. <laughs> Woo! Say, preacher, you shouldn't have studied so much. It's a little bit past noon. 
Ephesians 3.20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Jude verse 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Romans 14 verse 4, speaking to them that criticize and find fault with God's servants, it says, for God is able to make him stand. And then in Hebrews 7 25, wherefore Jesus is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth, to make intercession for them. Now I wanna to say to you right now, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Keep your windows open. You say, how do I keep my windows open? Stay in prayer. Stay in the word of God. Stay in faith. Trusting in your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Trust in the Lord. Pray, talk to God. Look to God. Keep your windows open. Bow your knee before the Son of God. Day after day after day after day. Bow. It makes no difference what the government says. It makes no difference what neighbors say. It makes no difference what anybody says. Bow your knee knee and the presence of Jesus Christ. Talk to God. Talk to God. Keep your window open and keep your prayer life going for it so God will hear your voice and hear your prayer. <laughs> Amen. Psalm 55 verse 16 and 7. As for me, I will call upon God. And the Lord shall save me evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and God shall hear my voice. Amen. Keep your windows open. Keep them open in praise and thanksgiving to God. Keep your windows open. I'm going to share tonight how to keep God's window open tonight. You know, it's pretty easy to keep my window open, but to get God's windows open is a little more difficult. How many would like to have a blessing? How many would like for God to open his windows and just pour it out? Woo! I'm going to talk about that tonight. But I want you to know that my God is able. And as a born again child of God, your God is able. Just like Daniel came out, you're gonna come out too. I got tickled with the first reading of the text, Brother Chuck, it says, and when he came to the den, I thought, I don't like dens. You go in, you go in some critter's den, you're gonna get bit, amen? We had this old hound dog. We lived out on the old Boyd place. We had this old hound dog. And he, he, if he saw a groundhog hole, he'd go down in it. He'd go after that groundhog. He'd go down in that hole. You wouldn't see him. We'd think we was never going to get our dog back. All you'd hear, see is a little old tip of his tail going like that. And that's all you could see. He'd be, and he'd be a barking. And, the, and, and we kept worrying about that dog because we thought, dog, you know, that's crazy. Stick your head down in a den. Well, one day, sure enough, he stuck his head down in the wrong place. He brought it out, big old bloody nose, half his nose bit off. Amen. And my dad said, son, let that be a lesson. Watch where you put your nose. <laughs> but Daniel was thrown in the den. But it came out okay. And we've been in the den, haven't we? Amen. Stand with me. I don't apologize for preaching a little extra this morning because I wanted to make sure my cholesterol was pumped out. This is the only exercise I get, folks. Give me a break. I'm as bad as Chuck. I don't get a lot of exercise. I shouldn't say that. Chuck probably been out running 10 mile run today. 35 mile run. Shouldn't say that. Oh, I speak for myself. Keep my nose out of his business. Josh and Terry's going to bring a song. I want to invite you. Open them windows. Open the windows.
Is your God able to save you? Is your God able?